Good evening, um, parents and staff. Thank you for joining me for the Botswana uh, board boarding house uh, parent meeting uh, tonight. Um, at the beginning, parents asked us if we can do uh, region or country specific boarding house meetings. But I've actually realized tonight is pretty much a repeat of last night. So I hope um, any of your of of the parents logging in tonight if you logged into last night this might just be a total repeat because we were expecting more different questions that as parents requested us um, to do different country meetings but unfortunately it seems like it's just a repeat of the question so uh, bear with me um if you uh, if you have joined us last night it's going to be a repeat but otherwise um welcome to all parents that uh, didn't join in last night and i hope that by the end of this um presentation you will have more clearer answers there are just a couple of things we are still waiting for the department of health uh, northern cape department of health to come and audit our boarding house so that we can register it as a quarantine venue we have been on their case now for the last two weeks we are struggling to get them out to our campus but um, a lot of schools around us have now had positive COVID-19 cases and those schools are now closed and I also know it's the same officials that now needs to make sure that those schools are safe again to open so I think our Department of Health is just under immense pressure currently uh, to get to to everywhere there in the Northern Cape there are now 48 schools closed due to COVID-19 um, and uh, in, the, in Kimberley, uh, there are now, I am in a correction, but I, I, between four or five schools that's now closed. Uh, two, two primary schools uh, close to us have closed yesterday also due to um, COVID-19. At this stage, we are spared. We have had no um, COVID-19 case at school or um, staff or pupils that have that have tested before positive or parents tested positive uh, before and that's part of the school um, so we are at this stage quite blessed that we haven't had a COVID-19 case and of course we're trying everything in our ability to keep our uh, campus and and uh, staff and pupils uh, and parents that enter our campus as safe as possible um, so Unfortunately, there's a couple of questions I cannot really answer tonight because we're still waiting for the Department of Health to give us guidance. And when I get to those questions, I'll make that clear. I also need to just inform you what happened this afternoon in South Africa. We have a trade union called SATU. They are the South African uh, Teachers Union and it stands for South African Democratic Teacher Union, SATU. They are the biggest union in South Africa. And they have, at a meet, at the Satu meeting this afternoon, uh, they have collectively decided that they're going to approach the Minister of Basic Education to close all South African schools until the uh, COVID curve has, um, is starting to come down, which is, means it's indefinitely because we don't know when that curve will come down. As you know, the cases in South Africa is now climbing and it's actually now getting rough in South Africa. So, we, this is a new development that we now need to, to keep our eye on um, because they are the biggest union. So they have the biggest support in the government schools. Uh, my staff or independent school staff are not really unionized, but if they have an effect on the Minister of Basic Education to close all government schools in South Africa, there will be pressure on independent schools to follow suit. And if this happens, we will then take clear guidance from the Independent Schools Association of South Africa to, that we are a member of and that we've taken a lot of advice from up to this point. So this is a new development. We'll keep our eye on it and uh, we will see what the Minister of Basic Education will say about this um, decision that Satu has, has taken. Uh, they will now, they decided they're going to approach her and we'll have a meeting of her and she'll probably um make a statement uh, after that um but i just want to mention it tonight because this is now a new development that we need to keep our eye on um because it's also while we're trying to get our borders back in south africa if this is a new development and this is where the minister is going with this decision then we need to 
um, inform you as soon as possible what's happening. So that's that's a, a media briefing uh, or media statement was released by Satu this afternoon. And as I said, we'll keep our honest and, and on it and we will let you know what's happening. But that might also have an effect on uh, face to face schooling and coming to the boarding house. Thankfully, our online product um, is still running. Uh, that's what your kids are following. And I think you'll agree that it's an excellent product. And uh, uh, also, what will then happen to exams and whatever if they do close the schools? We will then we really start putting contingent plans in place uh, this afternoon. And I will then have further conversations with all our stakeholders uh, as well. So there's Mrs. Drew's uh, cell phone number. If there are any questions that you might have that I have not covered in tonight's presentation, then you're more than welcome to send a WhatsApp uh, or an email uh, if you have an email address and uh, we will answer those questions at the end of this presentation. So the first question was, please explain the contingency plan of removing children from the school campus within 12 hours of notice if a case is confirmed. So if we have a COVID-19 uh, confirmed case, that if it's a, a child, that child will be removed from the boarding house and will be put up in a guest house. We will then inform you as parents, we are currently speaking to two guest houses that is willing to assist us if this happens. And uh, they are also willing then to assist us with um, uh, looking after uh, the child that's, that's tested positive. And of course, as a school, we all play our supportive role and also make sure that the people are safe and that they are uh, in safe hands. Uh, both guest houses are around the corner from us and uh, we have as a school close relationships with those two guest houses. So it's not like we, we have never worked with them before. How do parents come to South Africa at short notice? Uh, unfortunately, this will depends on Department of Health and Department of Home Affairs as well as uh, Botswana's authorities. So this is a question you need to rather ask the authorities in, in Botswana to say, if my child's being schooled here and I need to cross the border, of course, from a school point of view, we'll give you permits. We can give you a permit, giving you a reason why I need to travel to, 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 to South Africa and Kimberley. But ultimately, this is in the Department of Health, Department of Home Affairs, and your country's authorities' hands if they're going to allow you through the border post or not. So maybe just add to that first bullet. So the kids then that had that uh, um, contact with this child that's that then COVID-19 positive, they will also then be quarantined at the boarding house. And uh, we have a school nurse and et cetera that will then step in to assist with that process. If a pupil tests positive, they will not be allowed to cross border back home. That is correct. So they won't be able to. Please outline parents' role and how we should prepare for such. It's very difficult to say to your parents how you prepare. I do think it is important that you request your authorities on your side, um, how, and because they will also be able to advise you how this African side will allow you through, because the border posts will talk to each other, the authorities will talk to each other when to allow people through the border posts, and they will be able to, to inform you what you can do. From a school point of view, we will, of course, the, the option A is to quarantine everyone in a boarding house. And as I said, if somebody tests positive, they will be removed. Everybody else in contact with them, they will then be quarantined in the boarding house. And we will make sure uh, that they then go through the normal tests again to ensure that they are, are safe. If there's more than one border testing positive, that all will then be housed in guest houses. And we'll request your parents to get through the border post as soon as possible, even if we maybe can then transport them to um, the border post if we're allowed to. Otherwise, they will just have to quarantine here in the guest house and we'll ask your parents to come through the border post as soon as possible and quarantine with them to, to look after them. But in the meantime, we as staff and um, or as a school rather and um, the guest house will step in to assist. If someone tests positive, must entire boarding house be vacated? This is where we're waiting for the Department of Health to um, give us guidance. But what will probably happen is the person that tested positive will, as I said, will be removed and will be quarantined in the guest houses that we're speaking to. They're also currently applying to be a quarantine venue. And then, uh, and that links to what I just said, perhaps the temporary accommodation could be considered for the temporary isolation testing. 
the borders that's not positive will stay in the boarding house quarantining and the rest who is positive will stay in a quarantine approved department of health quarantine uh venue which will then of course or facility rather which will be in then those two guest houses that we're talking about there's an increased risk that staff and children may not be able to adhere to physical distancing what appropriate efforts should be made to maintain physical distancing where possible particularly with roommates in the boarding house so first of all the bottom half would advise us if our rooms are acceptable to have two kids in a room what we will do is we will put screens between the beds so that um they don't so that there's a, a clear division between them um but we all again take guidance here from department of health if it's two in a room or one in the room if it's one in the room it means that uh, we're going to then have to find other borders uh, rooms um and and uh, space uh, and or are we only going to run at 50 percent some boarding houses were only approved to run at 50 percent other boarding houses were allowed to run at 100 percent it depends on the department of health and their uh, uh, guidelines that they're working with and that's why they need to come and visit our facilities so that they can tell us what's allowed and what's not allowed um so at this stage this is one of the questions when i said we need to take guidance from the department of health what is the outcome in terms of pupils with asthma or any other serious underlying conditions any person that's got an underlying condition might please stay at home they cannot come to the school uh, all our um, health advisors have made it very clear that any person with an underlying condition um, is at high risk and it's very difficult for us as a school to um, say that they are fully or totally safe i cannot give that of course we're trying to keep everybody safe and we're trying to keep the place clean and hygiene hygienic and sanitized but at the end of the day i cannot guarantee uh, i can't give you that full guarantee that your child will not get sick if they have underlying conditions so anybody with underlying conditions will not be allowed to return back to the boarding house the school should reconsider whether borders should be permitted to leave the school premises during free time in order to minimize unnecessary interactions with others off the school premises for example going to the mall can one consider collective or bulk shopping delivery to school and uh, i know that i think we all will be more comfortable um, the less movement the better uh, pick and pay for example here do offer uh, a service where you can phone in your order and you just go and collect so that is something we can do but as i said last night as well um i even get cabin fever i live on campus and i go to school and home school and so sometimes i just get in the vehicle and just go around the block just to change my scenery because it gets too much if you day in and day out just on school campus and you cannot move so to keep them on campus for because basically if they arrive on the first of august they'll probably only go home in december to keep them on campus the whole time is it, it can't happen that is just unrealistic um, but we can move, minimize their movement and that will be done in accordance with um, the regulations as well as what the boarding house management would like us to, to do and, and at the end of the day it is to, to keep everybody safe as well. Um, but one can't just say sorry you must kind of stay on campus the whole time and you can't leave campus. That is, that's unrealistic and that's, uh, that you cannot expect that from a child to sit on campus now for five months before they go home. Um, so boarding house management will, will and, and myself will continue discussing this further how to do this but we also advise just parents to send them with everything they basically need and that this what they need to buy is basically just maybe um a chocolate or a packet of chips um and and etc um that's why we will send vehicles to the border post with um a big enough vehicles and big enough trailers because remember, they now need to bring their winter clothes and civvies and et cetera. So we'll make sure whatever vehicle we send is big enough to make, keep physical distance, to ensure safety in the vehicle, but also that they have enough space that they can bring their, uh, their uh, luggage for basically five months uh, that they will have to be uh, sorting out uh, or bring to for the school that is sorted out for five months. Mm -hmm. So um, that is, that's what we're going to to do regarding this um, but it's unrealistic to, to to say to people sorry you can't leave campus for five months one can't do that what will the room still be shared uh, that's what i said the department of health will give us adv advice how will it be dealt with if one pupil gets sick 
We have an isolation area in the boarding house that uh, Mrs. De Bruyne and the team um, will, will help and set up with the school's assistance, of course, uh, where if a pupil gets sick, they will be, I'm talking about now normal flu and cold, um, they will be isolated. Uh, we have to already discuss what will happen if they're COVID-19. And then, of course, we have a full-time school nurse that will assist them. And of course, if they have to go to the doctor, we'll take them to the doctor. <clears throat> Sorry, should one pupil at the boarding house test positive for COVID-19, will the boarding house still be allowed to operate? As I said, uh, the kids that are negative or that's, uh, that are contact with a child, they will be in the boarding house quarantining while the child is positive will then be uh, quarantined at a guest house. Is it possible to reconsider the school's decision to run the quarantine period only from the 1st of August? We understand that the school is able to regulate the 14 days if everyone is doing it together, but should the boarding house be an accepted quarantine area until September, then a pupil could still arrive and quarantine for two weeks following the procedure. And then after that, mix with others who have completed this and cleared. So start at different times with different individuals. I've spoken to many boarding houses um, that has done this, where they allow the group to arrive on the 1st of August, then for example, the 7th of August, then the 14th of August, it becomes a nightmare to, to, um, to police. Also, um, now kids have been quarantining for two weeks, are now allowed to have a little bit more freedom to roam around, and one child still needs a week to go. There are teenagers, it's gonna be very difficult for them to sit in a room, not mingling, uh, the little mingle they can do to, with their friends as well. Um, so other boarding houses have, have really, and other CBCs have done this, has advised me, do not do that. They've done it and it created all kinds of nightmares for them. So 1st of August, you have to arrive and quarantine in a boarding house. If you want to arrive after the 1st of August, that is when you will have to quarantine on your own and probably that will take place in a state, South African state facility before you then allow to come to school. So that's unfortunately is not trying to be difficult. We're not trying to be nasty, but just from a practical point of view, uh, we cannot, we do not have the, the manpower or the resources to do different arrivals at different times. How's the September holiday is going to be treated as the borders would have only just returned to school? We will cater for the borders during those two weeks because they probably won't be able to go home um, and uh, to continue staying on in the boarding house. Mr. De Brain and the team is currently uh, working on it and we'll, we will have more meetings around as well of which staff will be on duty during that time, but they will be able to stay in the boarding house. Will social distance being considered when traveling to Kimberley? As I mentioned, we'll send enough big enough vehicles where social distancing can be, uh, will be kept according to transport regulations uh, and as I said we'll send big enough trailers as well to bring their luggage. Will the borders be given counselling during quarantine? Definitely. I've already spoken to Dr. Swicker and she and her team will ensure that there's a counselling program running for the borders during this two weeks that they are quarantining but also after the quarantine period as well. How will the dining or catering work for the quarantine period and thereafter? So during the quarantine period, the food will be sent to their rooms. That's according to uh, regulations. Um, but after quarantining, to keep the min numbers minimal, the um, boys will eat on their own and the girls will eat on their own. And that means it's around about, if everybody, all the boys and all the girls come back and we'll have to have everybody back, it's around about 20 at a time. They'll be in the dining room, which means we can keep really good distance. Also remember that uh, normally, um, it's a buffet style uh, 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 supper that they have and breakfast, but here it's not allowed. One person will dish up for them um, and uh, also ensure that they keep their physical distance. Has the child bathroom procedure been finalized? This is one of the questions that we finalized by the Department of Health. But basically, if there are five showers, it will be uh, two showers open in the middle. So it will be number one, two will be open number three can be used and number five can be used five toilets again one three and five can be used two and four will have to be uh, open but also probably only two or three at a time after quarantining in the bathrooms and there will be a, a cleaning and sanitized program in place but also during quarantine only one person in a bathroom at a time so 
where there's one bathroom in the boys' side, for example, there's five showers and five basins and five toilets. That doesn't matter. Only one person at a time allowed. They said, I'll work in the roster system and the pupils have to stick to it. Otherwise, they're going to be selfish. Has the frequency of the laundry service been finalized? Yes, we're going to do it in-house and it will be done daily. So the one week, for example, and this is something the boarding house management will sort out. Um, but on Monday, one week, for example, the boys will hand in Monday, Wednesday, Friday, the girls, the Tuesday and the Thursday. And the other week it will turn around. But they basically will try to, and also will try to do the laundry over weekends as well. So we will... Um, and we have to appoint no more staff to assist us with this process. So um, that, so that they, they don't have to wait weekly for the, for the laundry. It will be hopefully every second day or third day they'll get their clothes. But we do recommend that you pack a little bit more service for this period as well. It is cold. Um, it's extremely cold currently in Kimberley. I just heard now that tonight will be the coldest night uh, ever uh, in, in Kimberley and we can feel it. So, um, that will mean that clothes will be well. have um, tumble dryers in place as well, but it just means that things might take a little bit longer to dry as well. So um, pack a little bit, pack warm and definitely pack uh, a little bit more clothes as well. That's why we'll send big enough vehicles. You mentioned that educators have to quarantine. What about parents who travel to hotspot areas? Yes, parents that travel to hotspot areas, when they come back, they must send they contact with the kids, the staff member of the parents and the child must isolate um, uh, if they are positive, then they have to quarantine. Otherwise, they stay in isolation for four or five days just to make sure that, they, um, that they're clean, that they don't have COVID-19. When exactly will the September exam start? So grade 12, so we're aiming to start on the 21st of August, running up to the 18th of September. And the grade 8 to 11th will start around about that period, that time as well, and the primary school as well. Um, those dates will be finalized this week and that we forwarded you, but um, work round around from the 21st of August going forward. What will happen if uh, Satu get their way and the Minister of Education closed schools for the rest of the year? Um, we will continue with our online learning and we will ensure, we've already spoken about this afternoon, we'll ensure that the kids can do, still do assessments. Um, it will be a different format, it will look different, but uh, September assessments will then still take place. How it will work for grade 12s, we will then have to take guidance from the Department of, uh, from the IEB, which will take guidance from the Department of Basic Education. What is the final outcome in terms of boarding fees payable? Do pupils only start paying from the moment they return to school? So, boarders that return on the 1st of August, they will, you pay full boarding fees because the two weeks that you're missing now will be made up for the two weeks in September that you'll stay in the boarding house. So you're not losing out. So term three and term four boarding house fees are payable. If you opt not to send your child back, then it will be 50% fees that needs to be paid. And the remainder, we're giving you a discount so the remainder can be used. So we will, so because we'll have to have invigilators and couriers that put, will courier these papers to Botswana and an invigilator and a venue must be paid on that site and uh, we as a school will then, um, sorry, then you as parents will, have, will bill you, but you have to pay for those fees. And that's why we're not charging full boarding fees. Why still 50%? Because remember, boarding house fees are in actual fact payable for the year, but uh, we just bill it terminally to make it things easier for you, just like we do schooling, because we do have fixed overheads uh, in the boarding house that needs to be uh, covered. If you are not happy with this arrangement, then unfortunately you'll have to withdraw your child from boarding and you can continue with online schooling, but I cannot then guarantee your space in boarding for next year. That's the only um, disadvantage. What if my child is sick when they're about to leave for South Africa? They will not allow you through the border post. If you're sick, unfortunately you'll miss that 1st of August due date and then you will have to continue with online learning or when you are feeling better, quarantine uh, in a state facility, if that is what they will allow you to do, and then come to, to school. Those are all the questions that we received. Are there any WhatsApp questions? Seems like there are quite a few. The question is, if the kids staying at the boarding house, at the guest house at whose expense? 
We are um, finalizing those costs, but it will probably be on the school's uh, expense uh, for that time. We are just trying to, to negotiate uh, fees with them, with them currently. The question is, if um, kids want to quarantine later, are these guest houses then available to quarantine in? That's what they're trying to ask the Department of Health to approve them as a quarantine venue for our borders. If you come straight from, from, um, from, from Botswana, for example, that you can quarantine in that venue if you miss the 1st of August date. Again, this is what we're waiting for um, the Department of Health to advise. Yeah, if you quarantine later on your own for those two weeks at the guest house, that is for your expense. Yeah, the World Health Organization apparently have now said that masks made no difference. On Sunday night, our president has announced that uh, cloth masks are compulsory in South Africa. And if you don't wear it, you can even get a criminal record. So we are, um, uh, what's, we, we are adhering uh, South African regulations and all businesses are now required to the customers and their employees must wear those masks. So they will probably, I, I assume our government will now take note of what the World Health Organization have said and uh, will probably advise differently soon. But for now, that is what they require us to do, to wear cloth masks. And uh, while that's part of our South African regulations, we need to follow. Okay, there's no WhatsApp questions. I wanna see if there's a question in the chat group. What arrangements will be in place with regards to the TEM exams? The learners will be unable to return on the 1st of August due to underlying com comorbidities. So we will um, assist you to write in your country so in Botswana, we will ask you to write in Gaborone, uh, and we are currently talking to uh, one or two schools there to see if they can assist us with uh, invigilators as well. And we have a contact person there that's trying to arrange these things for us. Same if the parent from Namibia is here tonight, same story. Uh, we will help you to write in Vintuk at one of the schools there, and in Masiru. Uh, we will try to organize that the kids try when the trial we are organizing that you're right there as well so we are assisting um in that sense so that you can write your september exams in under con exam conditions at a school where we can we know our exam process um the, the, it's still uh, the integrity has been protected Seems like those are all the questions. I'm just going to give another couple of seconds to see if there are more questions coming through. We picked it up last night as well. Questions stop and then Sunny, there's a spurt of more questions. So I just want to see if there's maybe the same story. Give it 10 seconds. All right, seems like we've received all the questions. Uh, I hope uh, parents that have answered your questions tonight. I do apologize for the two or three questions. I can't give you clear guidance because you're waiting for our Department of Health to give us uh, more clear guidance. As I said last night as well, I cannot just follow what Northern, what um, the Department of Health allowed in Free State uh, or what they allow in Gauteng. We, we've noticed that, um, I don't know why and I can't answer that why, but we realized that province to province, the, the health department has given boarding houses different advice and different things that are allowed and not allowed. So therefore, I can't just assume what they allow in Gauteng on Free State, they're going to allow a year or vice versa. Um, we are really trying our utter best to get them onto campus. Today, we've made quite a few phone calls and we'll continue doing it until they are here so they can give us more clear guidance. I hope this will happen before Thursday night where I can give you more information. And I also probably will be able to give you more uh, answers on the development from the SATU asking the Department of Basic Education to close schools in Africa. Um, I do believe that Hong Kong has just asked, uh, I've just closed all their schools. And I believe that SATU and um, Massimo Amani, who's the old DA leader, 
they've all now taken note what Hong Kong is doing because their numbers are also um, jumping up. And they are now citing that as a reason why we as African schools must also do the same. Hong Kong had 34 cases in schools, uh, 32 or 34, I'm going to correct you now, and that's why they're closing. And our, our, our um, SATU and, and other organizations are now citing that as a, as a reason um, to close this as well. Otherwise, we can have problems. So we're watching the story, and I'll hopefully give you, be able to give you more advice or more info on that also on Thursday night. Otherwise, parents, thank you for your support. Sorry, there's a question here. Yeah. The question is, um, we are, our grade 12, actually all our kids are doing, are doing physical education. And when they, they, we're adhering to physical distancing, but when they run on their own, they drop their mask so they can get oxygen. The question is now, um, this is an airborne disease. Uh, I must be honest, there are quite a, a lot of theories regarding this, if it's an airborne disease or not. It's not been clarified that it is. There's more medical um, evidence that it's not an airborne disease, but that's a discussion totally on its own. The question is, is airborne disease, um, are we then rather going to stop this because they can't get it while they're running? Um, as I said, there's, 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 there's different medical advice on this. Uh, I must be honest, I didn't really give this much thought. Um, I will... Uh, put it in my thinking cap and, and just take more advice from our authorities to see uh, what, what other schools are also doing. I'm a strong believer that teenagers need to get oxygen. Kids, teenagers are not just going to, to do exercise on their own um, and it's part of their development. If it's to the detriment of their safety, of course, we will not do it. Uh, I will, after this evening, phone a couple of medical practitioners and yeah, they get their advice on it because they are the they are knowledgeable on this matter. Um, and if they advise me not to do it, then we won't do it. Um, but yeah, good question. Um, but there are different theories on this matter, if it's airborne or not. But we will, I'll take advice from medical practitioners. And uh, especially in any case, it's now so cold, so I can't foresee that uh, the kids in any case will now do physical education. Uh, but when it's a bit warmer, we might make a plan. But good question, we will look into it. I hope I've answered that question. Dennis, thanks for your patience. Thanks for your support. Uh, continue, encourage your kids to continue with the online learning at home. Um, that's why we're running this concurrently as well. So parallel with face-to-face -face that nobody loses out. I know the kids are probably looking forward to come back to school and just see their friends. Um, and also I know this uncertainty is getting to, to all of you. Uh, but thank you for your patience. We are trying hard on this side to get your kids back into Africa and to keep them safe. And that is why we delayed this process to ensure that everybody that is living in Kimberley, that our campus are now safe for them. And I didn't want to do it running parallel, trying to get borders back and trying to get my ECD open and trying to get day scholars back. Then we would have dropped um, the ball somewhere and we would have um, not guaranteed everybody's safety. I know other schools are open with their boarding houses. But I can also say to you that a lot of schools that open their boarding houses have now run into trouble with many things because they did it too quickly. Um, I might be slow in this process, but I do believe this is the best for, for everybody and to ensure that we are adhering to everybody's safety. Ultimately, that is my responsibility as it to keep everybody safe and to ensure that we have all the measures in place and that we are adhering to all regulations I must also just make it very clear that some boarding houses are open without the Department of Health of giving them approval and they stand chance to be closed as well. So not all boarding houses that open have to have the right to open. And that's why they also open faster or sooner than what we did. But I rather want to know that you as parents are happy with my process and that we are, that when they return to the boarding house, I know that my staff are safe and I know that you um, that your kids are safe uh, and that's my ultimate goal but that's why while we're getting everything in place the kids are not losing out because they can continue with online learning 
Thank you for joining me. If there's anything else, you're more than welcome to contact me, but otherwise we'll see each other on Thursday night. Thank you for joining and have a good night. Thank you.